Hi, my name is Ben Owens. In this video, we're going to talk about linear equations in two variables and how we express the solution to this type of equation. Now, if we have this equation, y is equal to negative 3x plus 5, what would it mean to solve this equation? In other words, how do we know when we have a solution to this equation? Can you think of maybe one solution to the equation? Well, let's see. If x were equal to 0 and y were equal to 5, this would make this a true statement because 3 times 0 is 0 plus 5 is 5. So we would say that this is a solution to this equation. However, it's certainly not the only solution. Suppose that we let x be equal to 1. In this case, if we plugged in x for 1, we would get y is equal to 2. This is also a solution to this equation. Notice that if we plugged in 1 for x and 2 for y, we would also get a true statement. And so therefore, this is another solution. Well, as you can imagine, we could keep going on and on and on. If x was equal to 2, y would be equal to negative 1, and so on and so forth. So clearly, this is not a very good way of expressing the solution to this equation, this linear equation in two variables. To make these numbers easier to, to see or easier to use, instead of having to write x is equal to 0 and y is equal to something every time, instead, we use what's called an ordered pair. So this solution, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 5, we would represent as the ordered pair 0, 5. We always let the first um, coordinate here be the x value, and the second coordinate is the y value. So this solution to this equation, we could represent as 1, 2. And this solution, we could represent as 2, comma, negative 1. Now, having, a, having this as an ordered pair is nice because it's a lot easier to write than having to do x is equal to something and y is equal to something every time. However, we still haven't answered the question. That is, we still have not found all the solutions to this equation. Well, it turns out, as you can imagine, that there are infinitely many solutions to this equation. And they don't even have to involve whole numbers. They can involve decimals or fractions as well. So what would be a good way of expressing all of these solutions? It turns out that the best way to do this is to use a graph. So we use a graph in order to express all the solutions to this equation. So if we were to plot these points, the ones that we have found on the coordinate plane, let's see, 0, 5 would be 0 on the x-axis and 5 on the y-axis, so that would be this point here. 1, 2 would be 1 on the x-axis and 2 on the y-axis, so we have this point here. 2, negative 1, of course, would be here. Notice that when we plot these points, they line up in a certain way. In this case, they happen to form a straight line. So this is why we call this type of equation a linear equation. Because when we take all the solutions and line them up, it forms a straight line. Now, when we're looking at the graph of this linear equation, it's important to realize what we're looking at. I like to think of this as a collection of infinitely many points. That is, it's not necessarily one solid thing, but infinitely many points along this line. All of these infinitely many points are solutions to this equation. That is, when you plug them in, they make this equation true. 
So anytime we have a graph that's expressing an equation, really, this graph is all the points, infinitely many uh, in this case, that make that statement true. That's what the graph of an equation is. I hope this video helps to make um, sense of why graphing equations is so important and also so useful in expressing all the solutions. Thanks for watching.